All right, for today's video review, we've got Transformers Generations Legacy Blaster and Eject. That's right, I found my first Legacy figure in retail, and it's uh, it's Blaster, who's a figure that was also released in Kingdom. <laughs> so, you know, more or less still a Kingdom figure since they are exactly the same figure, but it is, it is the Legacy version, I promise. It was really exciting to see the new uh, Legacy, like weird psychedelic box art on the store shelf. Uh, I don't usually show packaging, but just to prove that it is the uh, the Legacy version. Legacy is starting to roll in, and it's really exciting. Uh, I've seen reports of some people finding uh, the deluxes in in, uh, in New York, so hopefully uh, they'll be hitting L.A. pretty soon. But yeah, no, this is a, a really nice figure. He looks great in his, uh, his boombox mold here, uh, mode here. Uh, it's got a few spots on it that are a little bit gappy, like you can see through right there. And then weirdly, they decided to like, for these little lines here, they didn't need to make those, you know, like holes in the plastic. Like they could have just been molded detail, but... They decided to do that. I'm not totally sure why. I don't know if it's supposed to like give the illusion that those are like lit up level bars or something like that. But it, yeah, you know, I'm not a huge fan of that, but it's a really tiny detail. So who cares really? But yeah, you know, it, it's a little messy on the back as the boombox mode for Blaster usually is and like Soundwave's cassette deck mode too. But yeah, you know, still works well enough. It's got the nice handle there. Um, he also comes with Eject, who, uh, you know, I'll, I'll talk a bit but about more uh, <laughs> later on in the video, but he is done in this translucent blue plastic, which is a weird choice. I understand why they did it, because, you know, if they're releasing it with Blaster, they needed something to be like, you know, they needed the, the blue to gang mold with something, and, like, they used the same plastic on the... Uh, the clear window for the uh, the like door there, so that's probably why they decided to do it in the clear blue rather than an opaque blue. Because if they did it in opaque, then this would have to be opaque too. So, eh, I'm sort of wondering if they're not gonna like re-release this guy later in like buzzworthy bumblebee packaging with opaque blue plastic, which would be, eh, you know. If I were presented the choice between the two of them, I might pick up the one that has the uh, the opaque eject, but I would probably prefer the translucent plastic on Blaster, and I don't want to buy the same figure again, you know, just to get the, the better colored eject. So eh, that would be scummy if they did that. Not that I, you know, that I, that's just some an assumption that I have that they might do that down the line. I, there's no proof of that or really any evidence to speak towards it right now. But yeah, he does come with eject, who can obviously store in his, uh, in the, the chest here. If you you just kind of have to like push these pieces in. Sometimes it takes, like you have to be kind of forceful with it. Like if you just like push it in, well, it's working fine now, but it, sometimes it takes a sec to actually work, but still works pretty well. And you can just slide that in right there and then close it up. Works pretty, pretty good there. And he also comes with his, uh, his gun here. Uh, for storage in this mode, if you turn around the back, if there's a little, little slot on the handle of the, uh, the gun here and a little tab right there on the back. So you're supposed to, uh, just tab it on like that. And you know, that works fairly well. Like obviously it is sort of just sticking out the back of the mode here, but also the back of the boombox mode does not look particularly good to begin with. So it doesn't really like break the look all that much. And he's got some weapon storage in this mode, but yeah, he's got a lot of nice detail on here with all, all the little like dials and knobs and stuff like that. Uh, he does have like these weird vents on the side that sort of become questionably fake speakers in robot mode, which I'll talk about in a bit, but I, yeah, you know, I'll get up to that in, in robot mode. But yeah, for now, here he is in his boombox mode. Here he is with uh, with Studio Series Perceptor in his microscope mode, just because I feel like those two were, you know, often paired off with each other, especially in the movie. Um, and here he is with the Netflix version of Soundwave. So you can see, you know, boombox, cassette player, but still cool to see those guys together. And uh, here, here we, we can show off Eject with uh, a couple of the Soundwave cassettes too. Uh, in general, I feel like Eject works better because he's actually like, I mean, Rumble is too, but like actually squared off rather than some of them that have kind of like the weird hollowness in the back. Um, and I also feel like he generally fits better in their, in their modes as well. Like 
The door seems to say, have the same inner dimensions as Soundwave's door, um, but Eject seems to be very slightly smaller so that when you actually put him in, he, he doesn't fight you. I mean, he's a little bit thicker, so it's it, sometimes it's hard to get him out. But like if you take uh, Rumble or, you know, Frenzy or any of the ones that put any of the ones that were tight in Soundwave, they're also tight in Blaster. You can you can do it, but it, you know, it is a bit of a, a bit of a struggle. But, you know. And they, again, don't, they stay a little bit stuck in there, but you know, you can switch them, switch them out. They, it is more or less the same dimensions in both of them. Just most of Soundwave's cassettes are just a little bit too big to, to cleanly fit in there and eject fits just fine. So I, you, I hope we get the other ones. I hope we get Steel Jaw and Ramhorn and especially Rewind. Um, Cause I don't know. I'd like to have uh, the rest of Blaster's cassettes. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much him in his boombox mode. Uh, for transformation, we'll just start off with Eject here real quick because he's very simple. Uh, first thing you want to do is uh, take these bottom sections here and just unfold them like this. These will be his legs and then rotate them forward. Take his arms, unfold them, and then rotate them forward. And then the one annoying part is his head is on a ball joint and is like in this cavity back here, but there's not really like a great way to get it out. Like you kind of just have to get a fingernail on, on like a, one of the ridges on his head and get it. And it can be kind of tricky, but you know, eventually you'll get it. And then you can just rotate that out and rotate it around. And there you have eject in his robot mode. And he looks really nice uh, in terms of articulation for him. Heads on a ball joint. The, uh, the shoulders are on uh, swivels here. They can also go out to the side. He's got ball jointed elbows, which also gives him, you know, a, a bicep swivel. His knees or his, uh, his legs can go forward, back, out to the side. He's got ball jointed knees with a really deep bend. And then also, you know, that also gives him a, a thigh swivel. And uh, yeah, that's pretty good articulation for one of these little cassette guys. I think he's a lot more successful in my opinion than some of the other ones. Um, it, the only real bummer with him is that it's a little weird that you can just see straight through his, uh, his body here. Like, does he not have a spark somewhere in there? I don't know. I just, opaque plastic would have been such such a better option for him, but otherwise does look pretty good. Like the mold is is very good looking and very well articulated, but we'll talk about him a little bit more in a bit. But for now, for Blaster, uh, first thing you want to do, well, let's just take his gun off for now and put that off to the side, is, uh, is take the handle here and just untab it from itself and just unfold or fold these bits to the back and then there's a hole on the uh the handle here that will peg on right there just like that then you want to take this front plate and just separate it from here a little bit just because it tabs into the hips there uh, and then take these side sections and they're they're tabbed in a few places up here so you kind of have to bring them forward a little bit to loosen them but then you can just unfold the leg like that the tab went into the arm there that will just kind of naturally untab itself and just bring it down like that do that on both sides just like that and then rotate his legs like this take uh, the top section of this red panel and fold it in like that and then take the rest of it and just fold it onto the back of his leg there uh, rotate them around and then the uh, the feet here are, are like folded into the body. Well, I find the easiest way to get them out is just use the ankle tilt so you have some way to like actually get a hold on the foot at all. And then we can, uh, you can do whatever you want with this panel. I usually try to leave it a little bit folded up just so it gets out of the way of these tabs when you're trying to like rotate his legs back, but rotate them around at the waist for his arms here. They're kind of <laughs> in a weird position right now, but uh, you just want to unfold them like this and bring them all the way around and click them into place and then bring the uh, the hand down and kind of fold that into place and then rotate it around just like that. So he does kind of end up with like sort of hollow forearms, but that's kind of an interesting way to, to do that transformation just like that. And we'll adjust the camera here a little bit so we can see what's going on. And then you, for the, uh, the head here, you just want to take this panel on the back, fold it down like that, which gives you the clearance to rotate out his head and then just fold that back into place. And then the last step of his transformation is, uh, he's got these little vents from the side of the boombox mode on his, um, on his legs here, whereas traditionally 
the uh, the speakers would be on the the front of his legs here. But what they have the the these pieces are on a hinge, so you just push them in and rotate them around. And he's got new speakers on the front of his legs there. And uh, I don't know, is that cheating? <laughs> I guess. I mean, if it's implied that these are these speakers, then yeah, it would be. And these that these speakers did end up on the front of his legs in the original toy and in the, like the cartoon animation, but. I, if, if you just accept those are like new speakers that he just, I don't know, has for his robot mode design, I guess. I don't know. It, it seems like it could be a bit of cheating, but it, it's not the, the worst example of it. But uh, yeah, there he is in his uh, robot mode. He looks great. Um, what's What's been kind of a bummer about blaster designs in the past is that I feel like usually they kind of stray a little bit closer to his like toy and comic book design where he's you know got like the kind of like faceplate thing that goes over his eyes and the, the horns that stick like further up and back whereas in the cartoon his head sculpt looked very different and it's great to finally see a nice version of that design and you know it's a it's a little bit like you know a little bit more hard edge than the, uh, the the original one. Like the original one had, you know, slightly more rounded features, but I think it works pretty well. And it's it's just great to finally see a design of a uh, blaster that actually looks like he did in the cartoon. Um, in terms of articulation, his head is on a ball joint. So you get a little bit of wiggle back and forth and rotation, obviously. The, uh, the shoulders can rotate all the way around, rotate out to the side. He's got a bicep swivel. Eh. A few degrees over 90 at the uh, the elbow there. Uh, no wrist rotation or anything. He's got a waist cut. His hips can go forward and uh, back as far as you, as long as you move the plate out of the way, they can go about that far back. But that's this is why, like, if you just fold the plate back up, then they kind of like this tab bumps into it and gets stuck there. So I usually try to like angle it back just a little bit. Um, and they can also go out to the side. He's got a thigh swivel a 90 degree about maybe a degree less at uh at the b at, at the b at the knee <laughs> um and then the uh the feet can also tilt and then he's also got that toe joint so if you want to you know do a, do a pose like that i mean it kind of clicks into this position so there's nothing really in between here and here but eh, you know it can be useful for some poses there and uh yeah to uh, to give him his uh his gun here obviously he can hold it um, and then if you want to store it, uh, if, I mean, you could store it the same way it was in vehicle mode, vehicle, well, in alt mode. Um, but it looks a little bit awkward from the front, just kind of sticking out to the side. And then if you use his, his, uh, his waist swivel at all, it usually bumps it off. Um, what I generally do is I just, you know, he's got a bunch of like ports in the back here. I, I just like peg it on like that and it sticks up his shoulder a little bit, which messes with the silhouette, but Eh, you know, that's mostly clean. I sort of wish that he had like a peg on the gun somewhere so you could peg it into one of these holes and have it kind of slung around his back, like not using the handle as the peg. Cause like you can put it in the middle, but it doesn't like compress quite as much. And like from the front, it, you know, it's got that going on, which is a little bit awkward, even though you can't see it from the, the top as much, but I generally prefer that, you know, it, it's not as clean as maybe I'd prefer it ideally, but it, it works well enough. I'm not going to get too picky since I'm already fairly picky with my uh, weapon storage preferences. <laughs> um, here he is with Eject, obviously, who can see, you know, I'm not going to transform him back and put him back in. It still works. And then what's cool is, you know, he does have the one hand sculpted with the uh, the finger here. So you can, like, you know, display him kind of pressing the button to, uh, to like, let Eject out, which is, you know, maybe not as iconic as Soundwave, like, touching the shoulder button since he's kind of just poking his belly. But eh, still cool that they did that. In terms of comparisons, here he is again with Sideswipe, just for the standard one. Well, here they are, really. Um, here he is with uh, Earthrise Optimus Prime, just because I feel like they're pretty much toe-to-toe. Uh, -toe. Like, if you have this figure, that's pretty much the height that, that Blaster is. He's, like, very, 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 very slightly shorter, but not by much. Um, I almost took him off. No. <laughs> here they are with Perceptor again for his uh, his kind of buddy there from that one scene in the movie. And then here he is again with Soundwave. Just so you can see, he's uh, a little bit taller than Soundwave, which I feel like cartoon-wise is, uh, is not quite accurate. Usually they're about the same height, but 
you know, I'm okay with Blaster being a little bit taller, especially since like for a toy reference, you know, Blaster's toy was always like humongous compared to the original G1 Soundwave. So I, I'm okay with that. And then we can take them off and then just bring on uh, Rumble here and Laser B. I mean, technically like packaging wise, that's Frenzy, but whatever, you know, the blue one is Rumble, sorry. Uh, <laughs> whichever you prefer, I guess, but I prefer it as Rumble. And uh, yeah, they, they look pretty good together. You can see pretty much about the same height there. And I just, I it makes me want a new Rumble and Frenzy, honestly, just because like this figure, I feel like is a bit more, I mean, clear plastic aside, I feel like is a bit more successful than Rumble is. Um, just because like the one big joint that makes such a big difference in terms of their like expressiveness is the elbow and how like if you're ever posing these guys, they just have to have their like hands awkwardly stuck out to the side because they don't have an elbow joint. And man, does it make a difference just to like feel like this is like a, you know, a real like definitive generations uh, cassette guy to like be able to have him bend his elbows. And, you know, the ball joint at the head also helps. Rumble just had like a, a swivel here, so you don't get quite as much expression. But yeah, you know, I, I I think that he's probably the best. I mean, again, clear plastic aside, I feel like he's probably the best of the cassette guys that we've gotten so far. And it does kind of make me want, well, A, the ones that we haven't gotten already, and B, maybe updated versions of these guys too, just ones with elbows. The rest I can live with, you know, laser beak ravage, they're they're fine. Well, ravage is awkward, but you know, they're they're fine enough. I just wish I had rumble. And frenzy with elbows but yeah that's uh that's pretty much all there is to these guys they're both great figures um like i said you know i i do wish that the that they had used opaque plastic for uh for eject rather than the clear plastic and we'll probably get that in some way shape or form down the road i just really hope it's not tied to buying a whole new blaster figure along with it and I'm a little bit worried about that because if they gang molded these, then they might be, you know, hesitant to sell them separately. And then also, how are we going to get rewind? So I don't know. It, it, <laughs> I hope we get a blue, you know, a, an opaque blue one at some point. But otherwise, he's fine. I could probably remedy that with some report labels once they come up with like a Toy Hacks label kit for him or something. You'd have to kind of sticker over a lot of him. But you know, I, I think that would probably get the job done. But yeah, no, Blaster is a, a really nice figure. Uh, like, really not too many complaints with him. The joints all feel pretty good. I love, I love his design. He looks both great in both modes. On mine, I, I did notice that the Autobot symbol is just like a little bit slightly askew, which annoys me. And then also, it was much easier to see like in the packaging, but the, uh, the paint on his face doesn't actually go all the way to the edges. And I thought that would bother me a lot more. But then when I like look at it straight on, it kind of just makes it seem like there's, you know, like his face gets darker as it goes into the helmet. So it doesn't really bug me. And other than that, there, yeah, there's really nothing else to complain about with these guys. I think that they're both really nice figures. Um, but yeah, if you uh, enjoy my videos, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. I do reviews every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Without further ado, here we have Transformers War no, not War for Cybertron. <laughs> uh, Transformers Generations Legacy Blaster and Eject.